if you're just looking for a standard travel trailer RV, but you want something that is a cut above everything else, it is really, really hard to beat the Flagstaff Classic. This thing is really nice inside and out. Let's go take a look. Welcome back to another video, y'all. If you're new here, my name is Miles with Firmly Unbound, and I am here at Blue Compass RV today in Dallas, Texas, taking a look at the 2024 Flagstaff Classic, which is definitely one of the top of the line, best overall quality travel trailers out there that you will find. This floor plan layout here in particular, as Flagstaff Classic will have a wide range of different floor plan options, is the 826 KBS. Now I'm guessing KBS stands for King Bed Slide, as there are two slide outs on this travel trailer, and one of them is that King Bed Slide. But real quick before we get into this, again, wanna let you know I'm here at Blue Compass RV, and if you are interested in this RV, you can click the link down below in the comments or description of this video, where you can find our website, where you can search all of our 100 plus different stores across the United States, see all of the most up-to-date pricing information, and find the RV of your dreams. So go check that out. Getting onto the non-camp side, you can see right away, these have massive slide outs on them. Slide toppers already installed. And I think other than maybe Brinkley introducing a travel trailer this year, other than that, I really don't know that I can recall off the top of my head that really competes toe to toe with a Flagstaff. Now Flagstaff also has a sister brand, the Rockwood, which is the same thing. So obviously those two brands would compete as they are building the same product with different exterior colors, but everything else is the exact same. Other than that, the profile on this Classic is really big. It's a bigger profile than your standard travel trailer. So you get a taller ceiling height inside. And then you have two 30 pound propane bottles up front, power tongue jack up front. You have, I mean, even like your um, wiring and your cables for the battery, you can see they're all wrapped here and it's one solid thick cable where everything is confined in that space. It's not just a bunch of little tiny cables that are all flailing all over the place. Big spot for a battery here. You can fit up to a 270 amp hour lithium battery if you wanted to do that in that battery compartment. Molded fiberglass front cap, automotive grade windshield, and then it does have the three quarter cut front cap with the rock guard up front. I think the only thing that would make this even more premium than it, it, it's currently at is if it had a full profile, or not a full profile, but a full one piece fiberglass front cap and no cut in it. But other than that, I mean, this thing is really, really remarkable inside and out. Auto leveling on it. So not only electric stabilizers, but auto leveling. Now, because of how they do their bedroom design with the king bed in the slide out, you don't get a pass through storage compartment. So that is a little strange. Um, if you need that exterior storage, that might be a detriment to this particular floor plan layout here. But as you look underneath here, you can see it's aluminum framed and it is aluminum framing underneath your bed as well. So when you lift up the bed, we'll see when we go inside on most RVs, it is wood framed underneath there. Even if it is a fiberglass sided aluminum framed RV, they will still use wood frame pieces and support bars underneath the bed. Whereas in the Flagstaff, you're getting aluminum even under the bed. So another premium feature with that, you have the griddle cooktop, which you can use outside. I'll show you that in a second. Um, nice solid slam latch baggage door there, magnet latch to catch that. Slide toppers already installed. These protect the top of your slide outs from water building up there, debris building up, and also protects it from the sun beaming down on top of the slide out. Both slide outs have a rack and pinion style slide mechanism. So you can see that down underneath here. And then they are using a Goodyear Endurance tire and it has a torsion axle, which is also essentially acting like an independent suspension system. So there's not like a standard leaf spring suspension like you'll see, or even like any sort of suspension support areas in here as there is really more of an independent style suspension on these flag staffs. So pretty cool with that. More storage space through here. And this is a pretty unique, interesting storage door as it goes up pretty high. As you can see up through here, you could fit some fishing poles and different things like that in this space. So you do have that nice vertical storage with the magnet latch on that. It does have a tanked water heater. So unfortunately it doesn't have the tankless water heater on it, but that tanked water heater, you will have the gas and electric heat source on it. Um, biggest difference between a tankless and tanked water heater is with a tankless water heater, you can only heat that water with propane. So people will tell you it has unlimited hot water, but really it has as much hot water as you have 
propane supply, and once you're out of propane, you're out of hot water. Whereas with a tanked water heater, no matter what, you will always have, as long as you're plugged into an electric source, that other mechanism for heating your water with the electric component to that. Ladder already installed to get up onto the roof so you don't have to purchase some third-party ladder accessory to get up there. And then you have the bumper along the back. You can store things like your sewer hose in this bumper back here. And you have your water connections along the back wall along with your connection there for your 50 amp cable. Let's get up on the roof real quick because I do like to show you this from time to time. Um, Flagstaff, their roofs always look incredible. Never see bubbling on these. The um, caulk job along everything always looks really good. It's a thick caulk on there, it's not thin. And then you have your two solar panels right there. So two 200 watt panels on the roof. Already comes with these Max Air vent covers installed so you don't have to purchase those in addition to your camper. Um, Flagstaff being one of the only lines I've seen that is coming with those already installed, not having to be a third party accessory that you purchase. And then getting down off the roof, you have an outdoor kitchen awning that runs the entire length of the camper. It even has that metal protection along the outside of the awning when it's up in the closed position. Something again, I have not seen a single other travel trailer doing standard. So that is really neat. And then with the outdoor kitchen space, you have a two burner gas stove, metal countertop in this gas stove goes in like so. Nice big outdoor refrigerator with a little freezer section up in the corner, outlet in the corner, and storage space up through here, plus a motion activated light. Now that is pretty much everything. This is the rack right here where that griddle cooktop can go on, and it has a propane quick connect line under there. Um, solid entry step when you walk inside. So when I move this back, first of all, friction hinge door so that door doesn't slide open on or fly open on you and slam into the sidewall. But they also have a catch right here to make sure it doesn't hit the sidewall. And it has a latch right here to make sure it will stay open when you need it to stay open. So all those things are great. It has the slingshot right here. So the door, once it starts closing on its own, it will finish closing all the way. You have a privacy shade already installed on this window, as you can see right there. So love that, it goes from the bottom up. And then your steps are strut assisted, so they are weightless and you don't have to support the weight of those. So all these are great things that most other travel trailers in this class are not going to have. So a lot of really premium stuff that we're seeing. Finally, before we step inside, this is a lot of the build characteristics and materials here on this Flagstaff Classic. So you can go ahead and pause the video, take a look at this, read through these, but I will touch on some of these as we go through the rest of this camper. So let's go ahead and step inside. And as we step inside here, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it feels so good. It is like 95 degrees. I think it's a high of almost 100 today in Texas. And it is humid. I mean, so humid that if you're like, it's the type of humid if you're sitting in AC in your car and you're wearing sunglasses and you get out, if you're cold enough in your car, your sunglasses fog up immediately when you step outside because it's just so humid. So. Woo, it feels good to get in some AC. And the AC has been on the, in this unit for less than an hour. And look at this, y'all. It is down to 73 degrees in here. So it feels very comfortable. I mean, it is cooling down tremendously. Now, the first thing I have to show you with this RV, and actually, let me just kind of give you a look around, actually, because I want to get your feedback and opinion on this. Now, this is a you know lighter weight travel trailer or size travel trailer for the classic line where it's at 29 feet, 11 inches and only 7,900 pounds. So it's right at about 30 feet, keeping it relatively short in length. I think there are some people that will insist like their half ton truck could tow this and technically by most measures, it will pan out that your truck may be capable with both its max towing capacity and payload capacity to be able to handle a trailer like this. I would recommend a three quarter ton just because it's such a tall camper that definitely is not holding back on different weight aspects to build it. But you might be able to get away with like a spec out right F-150 to tow something like this. So that being said, right away, I noticed the size difference. That is one of the quickest things to recognize in here. And I can easily show it with this bathroom door frame. So I am 6'2 with my shoes on, and in this travel trailer, 
you can see here, I am not even close to the ceiling. I mean, it is about a seven foot tall ceiling in here, which means even the doors you walk through are super tall. And I think you would have to be probably about six, seven, maybe six, eight, to really feel the effect of like having to duck for something like this, which just makes this such a more comfortable space than most of your other travel trailers where you do have to duck under certain things if you are over a certain height. Certainly about one of the tallest travel trailers you're going to find as far as, far as uh, interior ceiling height in this area. I don't know why I just glitched out there, but <laughs> nonetheless. Um, now with this floor plan, you're definitely a little condensed on the seating area with them trying to keep it under 30 feet and give you an absolutely stellar bedroom. But check out this bedroom here, y'all. You have this massive sliding pocket door going to the bedroom. And that brings me to the color scheme in here as well. It is a very neutral color scheme, but it's very light and going to allow you to really add your own pop of color very easily. King size bed in the slide out, residential size king. Look at the bedding and pillows that you get. Plus the headboard, nice color. If you're full timing in an RV like this, you also have the additional storage up above here. These are soft clothes on those, so they close softly. Individual reading lights above each person with USB ports in the reading light. You have two shelves here on the bed, one up in the corner and then another little one right here with another outlet there. Pull down blackout shade on the window with curtains over the corners of the windows and same setup over here with the shelving. Then you look across from here, you have all of this floor space there, a really nice space to walk through. About a 32 inch screen TV on the wall. You have another window here looking out into your campsite and then all of this storage space right here. This is just tremendous, y'all. Look at that, six drawers, soft close mechanisms on these drawers. These bottom drawers are a little bit bigger and all of those will soft close. I mean, this feels like you're in a luxury fifth wheel, but it's just a travel trailer. And again, not just any fifth wheel, a luxury fifth wheel. This feels really, really nice. Storage space all through here. That looks like that goes all the way, mm, yeah, just about to that back corner back there. And then you have this big wardrobe closet where you can hang clothes up through there. Second AC in the bedroom, you can see it's dual ducting on this AC. So you have um, ducting running down both sides of this AC unit, down through the whole camper, both ACs ducted together. Definitely giving you really strong airflow through here. It feels very comfortable, even with how hot it is outside. This is actually probably the most comfortable camper I have been in today with the size of this camper being 30 feet, having two ACs on it and having dual ducting. I mean, it is, it is really, really comfortable. Nice windshield up front so you get that view out into your camping environment, be a little bit more immersed out there. Shade that comes down and this is actually, let's get it stuck there. Okay, yeah, so it'll be held in place with those curtains on the end so that it stays flush up against that window pretty much. Outlet USB ports here, solar components and your outlet back in that corner. Another outlet in this corner and then as we lift the bed up, a couple different things. First of all, lift the bedding up and you have drawers underneath here that pull out so you can get to storage under the bed right there. All these cabinet doors and drawers are all solid wood. So good quality there. A nice mattress. This looks like this is, this might be, this is at least six inches thick. It's possible this might be nine inches thick. That is a really, probably about nine inches, yeah. And that is a really nice feeling mattress that is m definitely a cut above your standard RV mattress. People might actually find themselves not needing to replace that or even get a foam topper. Then underneath here, you see all of your aluminum framing. So this is definitely one of the big um, structural components that makes this Flagstaff different. Even fiberglass sided aluminum framed RVs in the travel trailer space typically have wood structures underneath the bed. A lot of times they'll even have wood roof structures. So all of the um, construction components up in the roof will be made out of wood, whereas this is all aluminum. And, and then if they have a dining table in a Flagstaff, they'll also have aluminum supports under the dining table where that is most typically going to be wood. Sliding pocket door right here. And with the aluminum, obviously that's just a more solid material that won't rot out that is also more lightweight than wood. So you see how that door closes, outlets, USB ports here in this corner. And then this will slide open with a latch here to keep this open while you're going down the road. Coming through this way, when we walked in, you have some storage space right here by the door, plus your controls for the fifth wheel. 
This will link to your phone so everything this panel here can do, your phone can do, things like it, um, your slide outs, your water heater controls, your slide outs, your awnings, I said slide outs twice, your tank levels and your battery level. You have your solar charge controller monitor right there. And then under here, you can remove these shelves if you would like, if you want to hang coats or you have shelving in here. Light down here for safety. And that is really just a decorative little drawer right there. Two bar stools in this area. So this is gonna act as your dining table essentially. No storage underneath these. Solid surface countertop. So basically feels like a, um, you know, like a quartz style material or something along those lines. You have outlet underneath there, nice little arched area here and um, straps to hold these in while you're going down the road. Across from here, you have your two recliners, nice big Millersburg collection furniture. These are big recliners there. These will lay all the way flat. You have cup holders on both sides. You have the wireless charging pad in the middle and you have storage there. Outlet on this side of the sofa and looks like just on that side of the sofa is your outlet. Were there any plugs in here? Nope, okay, so yeah, just on that side. All of your windows out here have a um, day shade and a night shade, something even like high-end fifth wheels don't always have, having both of those shades, so that's great. Nice lighting fixtures there on the sidewall. And then a nice tall slide-out box because of the height of this. The slide-out box here sits at about six foot two in height. So if you're under six feet, I mean, it's gonna feel very spacious in here. Even being able to sit into that slide without ever feeling the sense to duck or anything. This is a Magic Chef 12 volt refrigerator. Again, you have 400 watts of solar on the roof. Pantry space here. Nice big area with that. And this will go all the way down to the bottom. So you can see down under here. And looks like they're working on a little project here. Which is totally fine. Sometimes when these RVs get to a dealership's a lot, there's you know, a couple tests. They run them through a whole pre-delivery inspection and every once in a while they'll catch something here or there. But I will say I'm actually surprised to see that is I've been filming a lot of Flagstaffs recently and this is actually the first one I've ever walked into that I can recall there is something that like was currently being worked on or needed to be repaired where I see that much more frequently in all kinds of different RVs across the industry but very, very rarely in a Flagstaff. I mean, it is very uncommon that I find some sort of, you know, deficiency inside of a Flagstaff model when I come to show them to y'all. You have outlets here, trash can here, nice utensil drawer. That is using solid wood in that space. Ooh, soft close on those too. And then these are using more of like a plywood style cabinet door with staples and they do have that soft close mechanism. Um, here's some con uh, components to the construction here. So you have a composite panel sidewall. So no Luon in the sidewall there. You have the 1800 watt inverter with inverted outlets, um, 400 watts of solar on the roof. We already talked about that. No carpet in the slide out. So they're using a woven style PVC carpet. We'll talk about the shower miser system. You have the day and night roller shades. Um, we talked about the aluminum frame dinette in bed bases, solid cabinet doors, hidden hinges, porcelain foot flush toilet, 86 inch interior ceiling height. Um, but you can see like no exposed hinges on anything, which looks clean. I guess this really is the only thing that has exposed hinges right there. Everything else is hidden. 50 inch screen TV. So when you're sitting down in your recliners, this is what your view will look like. Definitely just a really nice open space. I mean, this feels very comfortable to hang out in. Obviously designed for a couple with just having the recliners and the bar stool seating. You have a single basin stainless steel sink, black faucet, and two windows here looking out into your campsite. Magic Chef microwave, which is going to be an RV size microwave. And then you have a Magic Chef stove and oven right here. So this will be a three burner stove. It's a glass cover to give you more countertop space. And then you have a larger size oven than what you typically will see in a travel trailer. Storage space down through here, nice big space, pop-up outlet. We'll take a look at right here. So you can see how this pops up right there. Plus it has USB type C connections. 
another light here in the corner, and that pops down to be a wireless charging pad. Now this door right here, I could not get open, so I don't think this opens, I think it's just decorative, but you can see the heat is running through the cabinet, oh, excuse me, <laughs> the heat is running through the cabinetry there, and no um, heat ducts in your flooring, although I think I spotted one in the bedroom. It, yeah, right there. That's the only heat duct running through the flooring right there in the bedroom. Then as we go back to the bathroom, the bathroom just keeps making this trailer even more and more appealing. This is a large space here. This is a rear bath, obviously. Sliding pocket door going to the bathroom. Magnet catch there to hold that closed. You can see it actually looks like a nice full-size door. And then you walk in here, you have a great amount of countertop space compared to a lot of other travel trailers and a ton of storage space. So although you don't have a lot of exterior storage space on this travel trailer, a ton of interior storage space without a doubt. Max air vent fan in this bathroom and this spot you can actually hang some clothes in as well. You have a spot here to hang a towel. And the only thing that's a little interesting is this toilet is really up close against the wall. So I'm curious how this is going to feel. Let me go ahead and sit down here and let's take a look. So I'm only 185 pounds and yeah, I'm like, I'm right up against this wall. And when I close this door, my legs don't really feel the need to hit the door, but you definitely can't stretch your legs out at all. And it's surprising how close I am to this wall. That's really the only thing that feels a little off about it or a little strange, but the floor space, countertop space and ceiling height especially the ceiling height and the shower are second to none. I mean, really phenomenal. The shower space here, plastic two piece shower, huge seat along the back wall. And then with the skylight in there, you could be about six foot eight and easily fit in that shower. Even with the step up into the shower, you really don't have a whole lot of limitations with ceiling height as even to the spots where the skylight isn't at, you could be about six foot four and fit inside this shower. You have an adjustable height shower head so me being 6'2", my head actually fits underneath that with that being at the highest position. Then you have some shelves in the back for soap and that's pretty much it. Stainless steel sink here, nice big sink. And you get your medicine cabinet storage plus storage under here and storage under there. And these are just some boards that look like they need to be put back into their proper place, but they just kind of separate out the plumbing going on behind there. Well, speaking of plumbing, that brings me to the shower miser system. So this right here, this will recirculate your water until it gets hot so you don't waste a single drop of water, whether it be the fresh water tank supply that you may be using or if you're trying to conserve the space in your gray tank filling up too quickly, make sure you don't waste a single drop of water waiting for that water to heat up as you can make it recirculate until it's warm and then send it up to the shower head. And that is pretty much everything, y'all. Again, this is just one of the floor plan layouts from Flagstaff Classic, but it is a great one if you're looking for something under 30 feet that you could take just about anywhere and have no issues getting it into a spot. Plus, if you're wanting to tow with a not so heavy duty truck, a great option as well. And just so many great options throughout the whole Flagstaff lineup. But let me know what you think down below in the comments. And again, if you're interested in this RV or just ready to start shopping for your next RV, there's a link down below in the comments and description where you can find all of our different 100 plus locations across the US and see all the most up-to-date pricing. This camper here is only right around $50,000. So it seems very reasonable to me for the price and what you're getting. And it's definitely, you know, a comparable price to the highest end travel trailers out there in this segment. And I just think you really can't go wrong with the Flagstaff. It seems like the best built, best overall quality, best size camper that you will get in 2024. So. Go check it out. It's definitely something you should see in person. And that's all I got for y'all. Until next time, live firmly unbound.